All right, so welcome to our cooking summer class. Um, I want to actually first ask you a question. What do you typically make when you entertain or when you go to a potluck? Tell me, what's your go-to take, take a dish? Probably the pasta salad. <laughs> Pasta salad, I know it's yeah. a classic, right? And there's so many different variation of the pasta uh, pasta salad. So um, today we'll make it sort of a healthier version of that. So it sort of shows you that you can still make um, have your sort of favorite dish or classic dish, but make it a little bit more nutritious, more. Uh, high in fiber, high in protein, and so on. So a pasta salad, anything else that you bring? Hmm. Garden salad. Corn salad? Garden salad, yeah. Uh -huh. Salads are great. Frudate, right? Often people like to bring a cut of vegetables with some dip. That's another easy dish to take. Mm -hmm. um, different salads, um, uh, desserts, some people bring desserts, I'm not a good dessert maker, to be honest, I prefer, um, prefer uh, savory foods, but, but uh, I typically make, I make a lot my carrot salad, because people really, really like it, so it's easy, easy to prepare in advance, and basically, bring it. There's a few other salads. I make like an avocado corn bean salad that I made and for some class also. This is a delicious meal with some uh, sort of appetizer with some chips. But so today let's start with our first dish because we'll have to bake it. So this is the coconut chicken bites. The recipe actually uh, originated um, uh, from my mother-in-law. So unfortunately, she recently passed away. So this is the dish in her honor. Uh, she made it for me. I was like, oh, I love it. So coconut um, is, um, you know, a sort of Caribbean or, or it could be sort of the unique, unique flavor. Not everybody loves coconut, but some people really are into it. I am the, the, the camp of really like it coconut. <laughs> with coconut it's a very it has actually a lot of saturated fat when it was so if someone has a high cholesterol eating a lot of saturated fat might not be beneficial so we don't want to add a lot of coconut to our dish so we don't want to add a lot of coconut oil to our dishes a few years ago there was a sort of a trend that everybody was using coconut oil on everything and baking and and sort of later on, they, they said, well, you know, be careful with that amount, how much you use a coconut. But once in a while, it's perfectly okay. And again, it's it's just very palatable and delicious ingredient. So we're going to make a version of chicken bites with, coated with coconut. To decrease the amount of coconut, I what I did, so this is, I have just the coconut unsweetened, a plain coconut, and I put a little bit of panko, uh, panko uh, breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. So for two pounds, you need a cup and a half of coconut and um, and half a cup of breadcrumbs. So sort of decrease that amount of coconut. So we have that ready. And I already turned on the oven, 425, so it's heating. And I'm going to right now prepare the coating. And again, it's a very simple, it doesn't take much time. So I'm going to put my spices and the spices that I'm going to use to flavor the, the chicken is um, cumin, uh, coriander, salt, cayenne pepper. If you don't like cayenne pepper, if you don't like the kick or you're sensitive, you definitely can omit that. That's not a problem. Black pepper, again, if someone is sensitive to it, skip that. But um, the cumin and coriander, it gives a nice sort of undertone to goes really well with the coconut. So I have that. And I am going to 
I'm using chicken tender. So you can use the whole chicken tender if you want, but if you want for appetizer, I cut each chicken tender in three, three pieces. So this is my chicken, basically prepared. So I'm going to, <coughs> Mix my chicken with the spices. So mm, even the cumin smells so good. Often I go to the Indian store and I buy cumin seeds because this is the cheapest way to obtain spices, some spices. Yeah. Uh, and I toast them and then grind them in a, I have a coffee grinder and uh, I, Toast them and grind them in a thing. That's so why I have a powder. I will have it, you know, a jar of it. And I use quite a bit for Mexican food for stuff like that. And we're going to add the egg, just a beaten egg to it. So it can coat the, I should probably leave it something. I didn't have the, I think I had a, a pound and a half of the chicken. So maybe a little less. Again, the good thing about cooking does not need to be so precise, right? You can always adjust. You can you can wiggle your uh, your recipe. With baking, it's a different thing. I'm not a big baker. So, okay, we have our chicken. Okay, it doesn't look too appetizing. It's just a raw chicken with egg and, and seasonings, right? All right, perfect. And I'm going to, the oven is heating. And I am going to put the egg here. Uh, basically, have my little, my oven is so small here, so I cannot put a big tray, but if you have it, bigger one, do it all at once. You can also do it in air fry. And again, if you make a bigger pieces, you know, 10 minutes and you'll have a 12 minutes and you have a perfect, Coconut, uh, coconut chicken, uh, chicken tender. So, and this is a sort of a little, a little uh, play, right? Because, and you, the good thing. So, this is what it takes uh, a little time to, uh, to coat the the stuff because there's bites, right? So there's smaller. Bites. All right, so. While I'm talk, uh, making that stuff, I want to talk to you about summer, about uh, weight loss, about sort of all going out, entertainment. Um, so tell me, a lot of people, at least in past month, right? Right now we are end of July. A lot of people have been sort of struggling in the summer with their weight loss goals. And, you know, you also think kids are out of school. Uh, a lot of people go on vacation. A lot of people have more barbecue entertainment, you know, and that sort of makes it a little bit more challenging because, you know, if you go, uh, if you go to, you know, Monday through Friday, you sort of, following your plan and then weekend comes and Friday, Saturday and Sunday go to brunch, you know, you end up eating out a lot and it can impede the progress. I don't know if any of you have been struggling with that, tell me. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about strategies. How we can how we can do our sort of best and um, and basically avoid that, or maybe be a little bit more careful, or maybe just sort of say, okay, well, I know this is this is the entertainment we, um, uh, you know, time. Like, how can I make it uh, less impactful or less sort of uh, troublesome? In do, do any of you have any any good ideas? Any good tips? For me, it depends upon who I'm with and what they're comfortable with. Next week, I'm going to go and spend a few days with my friend from Brazil. And I really like her cooking, uh -huh. <laughs> I have to say. 
So I'm planning on, but she's very good. She won't, you know, say, come on, try this or let's do that. And uh, she already said one day we're going to go to the beach and we're going to get lobster rolls. And I said to her, no, we're not going to get lobster rolls because I'm not using my bread on that. And that's way too much butter, but we'll get a salad. Uh, you know, let's get some good fruit or I, I mean, I, we'll work around that. She's she's a close friend and, and she wants to see me lose weight, too. Uh -huh. uh, so I know she's going to help me most of the time. Okay. Uh, and if she wants certain thing, I'm going to have to let her. Go ahead or maybe, you know, once she said we're going to definitely go out to dinner. Uh, well, we're going to be going to this Italian restaurant and for sure I'm going to have a cannoli, but I'll plan that in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> See, that's a really great point. So often um, all that outing, we need to sort of plan ahead, right? Because when we plan ahead, it's much easier to sort of accommodate that. First of all, if you feel like weekends are very, you know, um, often uh, you you have parties, don't try to avoid skipping meals. Maybe that day go for a nicer walk, right? And a trick is don't go hungry. I'm telling you, this is the biggest mm -hmm. challenge uh, that a lot of people face. They will feel like, well, I need to really start myself all day. And when I go... Yeah can indulge well at this point you might be quite hungry and it's very difficult to say oh you know i am uh it's not um you know it's difficult to say no and often there's a lot of cultural things as you said like some people say you know you feel that you will offend people so i like that fact that sometimes it depends who you with but if you feel comfortable in telling your sort of Look, guys, I'm really trying hard this not to overeat, and this is so many delicious food. Just help me out. Don't force, don't force that food, uh, food on uh on me or something. I mean, you can you can turn around. Depends how comfortable you are with your um with your company. Uh, sometimes bringing an a, a dish to a party can help you to sort of offset um. Uh, you know, at least that you will know what you'll be eating, so eating right? There's something healthier option, assuming that you made a something delicious. So you can, you know, you can plan for that. Guys, I'm going to just put that in and leave it in the refrigerator because I have, I don't want to overcrowd that. What's it? Okay. We're going to wash it. Hopefully we put it in the sink. All right, so we have so far for strategies. So the plan go for a nice walk in the morning if you um if you know you're going to be so do a little bit extra of movement if you can, that right. Um consider don't go hungry. This is a very, very powerful tool that you can uh, use. Often when I go to a Either dinner party, I will have a big, I will have a snack. Protein and produce. Like have something. There's a rule, rule of 15. One of my uh, physicians that work at Form Health, or work, she's not with us anymore, but uh, she said the rule of 15. 15 uh, grams of protein, 15 minutes before we go with 15 ounces of water. So 15, 15, 15. Basically, drink your water something like a yogurt or cheese or um uh, or even like a slice of turkey or maybe protein shake or protein bar so you are by the time you go there you'll be like okay we can make a decision right now about the menu you're not starving um so that's okay we're going to put to that uh for eight minutes into into the oven and I'm going to set up set up a timer because um eight minutes start hmm. all right perfect so we have actually seven minutes okay
and then we we um we we flip it and put for another seven minutes and we'll be back. Again, you can do that baking in an air fryer. So going back to our dining out, enjoying the party. When you go come to the party, so you're coming not hungry, so you are equipped already. Uh, you can say, so you can make a reasonable decisions about what you're going to eat. And do not park yourself in front of the appetizers, right? <laughs> because it's just that you sit, you're sitting and you're nibbling and you, you will not even notice. And I don't know about you, but it happens to me a few times that <laughs> I just sort of, you just nibble, 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 nibble. You end up eating quite a lot. And then by the time you get to a main course, you fall, but you don't want to offend anybody. So you try to eat the main course. And then of course you want to try a little dessert. So you end up eating a lot, lot more. So another sort of uh, rule that I often, I don't want to put a lot of rules on you, but another sort of idea, make as make a parameters about your eating out. Like how about if you, if you go to a party, a barbecue, grab a plate, preferably smaller plate, and fill up your plate with the stuff that you want to eat. This could be your, your appetizers. You don't have to be super restrictive, but sort of this is your plate. Get your plate, get a glass of water first before you drink anything else, and enjoy the appetizers. And ideally, if you can sort of move yourself away from the spread, it will be tempting to us. Um, so practice that. Also, like if some people feel like I, you know, I have people have tendency to have more drinks. So maybe say, okay, I will enjoy my drinks, but maybe I will enjoy only two drinks and I will have a, drink a lot of water in between, right? So you can, you put on yourself some plan. You have a plan because without the plan, you just go with it and you eat whatever you, you want. And, and at the end of the day or the night, you feel physically, you don't feel well. And emotionally, you don't feel well because you say, why did I do that? Why, why did I overeat it? So again, those are just a very general tips, but next party, try to apply them and let me know how it, how it went. Perfect. So our coconut deliciousness are in the oven baking. Let's hope we won't have any malfunction of the equipment. Last time I was trying to do something in the pressure cooker and didn't work too well. So hopefully it will work this time. All right, now we're moving to our um, pasta salad. So pasta salad is, um, so there are many different pastas on the market. This particular is quite popular, this brand Banza. It's made from chickpeas, so it has um, chickpea flour, pea starch, topioca, and xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is for thickening, because otherwise it will not hold together. It's almost take a place of a wheat, like a binding thing. So you can buy xanthan gum in a powder and make dressings or add into ice creams for other reasons. But So this is only chickpea. Chickpea is a carbohydrate, but also has protein. So those types of pastas are usually higher in fiber because it's made from legumes and higher in protein as well. Still, so look at this. Uh, two ounces dry, and this is four per container. So it's quite a bit, uh, probably a cup. It has 190 colors. So still, you're not going to eat copious amount of that pasta, right? But if you have uh, two ounces dry, which is cooked probably to a, a good cup, you're going to get, uh, my dear, three grams of fat, not much fat, there's not much fat. You're going to get 35 grams of carbohydrates um, and out of the 35, five is fiber. So again, a good amount of fiber. And protein is 11 grams. Yeah. So if you remember, we are trying to get a lot of protein in each meal because it helps us with that fullness 
and it helps us with the muscles, right? Because we want to preserve the muscles as we are losing weight. So, so increasing the protein is very good idea. And I'm sure all of you who have been at form for a while hear that over and over again, and you're getting sick and tired of that, but it's, it's quite helpful. So protein and produce, your two piece, two piece in a pot. So chickpea is your protein and sort of, we can add more produce to it. So we're going to make, a, instead of the, the classic pasta salad with mayonnaise, we're going to make a lighter version. So first we're going to use as a base, the bonzo pasta. Again, much more protein and fiber than the regular pasta. Okay, so I have here, I cooked- Joanna, is that from uh, Trader Joe's or Amazon? Trader Joe's, you can buy- Trader Joe's. You can buy right now this pasta in any store. I mean, it's so- Oh, pretty. I don't see it in Stop and Shop, so that's why I was asking. Stop, you you see Stop and Shop, Shaw's, uh, Market Basket. I think I've been- Okay. But you can get that, and there's also many other varieties, lentils pasta. There's a damame pasta, even more. more. There, some of them are quite pricey, but definitely- uh, look for it and experiment. Hold on, All I right. smell the coconut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It smells good. <laughs> smells good. All right. So uh, we have. So I cooked the whole whole container so a bit. The texture, you know, it's not exactly my daughter, sixteen years old, try it, and she's like, "Mom, about the pasta." You know, she's teenage. She's she likes the things the traditional way. You don't change anything, modify her dishes. So she's like, oh, I don't know, I'm not so completely. So it does have a different texture. It's a little bit more almost like crumbly, if eaten by itself. But when you add the sauce, it's perfectly fine. I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. So look at this. So we go to add the pasta and I'm, they actually, be, after the class, I'm entertaining 10 people coming over for dinner. <laughs> I was wanting to eat like a chicken without head. So we have pasta. They will eat, enjoy that as well. And now we're going to add the produce to that. And uh, the produce that are chopped are, oh, I my timer is low, so we're going to stop the timer and we're going to put for seven minutes on the other side. And I have tendency to burn things, believe it or not, despite me loving cooking. A little, a little scatter has sometimes, so I need to time it everything. Okay, fabulous. I'm just flipping that. of those uh, coconut, they are not the fried. Normally, if you go to a store or restaurant and you have the coconut deliciousness, uh, they are deep fried, right? And this is not. So it's baking. Back to our pasta. So pasta, and again, we're adding a lot of produce. So we have some protein in the pasta, and I chopped just a few cucumbers, right? It's summer, some cherry tomatoes. I love red onion. I love the crunch. Um, bell pepper, red and white. Um, so I'm just going to 
dump that, right? And so we have already, look at this, how beautiful and colorful everything is. I could do even more of that. Also since, so you can make a different version. You can go with the Greek flavors or with the Italian flavors. If you want Greek flavors, let's put some Kalamata olives. Uh, and today I'm making a Greek sort of Mediterranean dinner. And uh, the, the, the secret to a cooked pasta recipe is actually herbs, believe it or not. So uh, you can, if it's a Greek, you can put, um, I have some dill from, chopped dill from the garden. So I'm gonna put that, why not? Uh, and also, you know what is good about, uh, about this pasta that's gluten-free? So sometimes a, uh, I'm gonna add some mint as well. Parsley, parsley, and all the herbs not only add a lot of flavors, but uh, it looks beautiful and there's always nutrition values to all the herbs, right? Uh, vitamin C and many other things that are might not be discovered yet. So on your herbs, um, I often use it as much as, as I can. If you make it custom style, use basil. And then you can, instead of feta, you can use a, you can use um, uh, mozzarella, right? So here's my feta. I'm going to, so I'm going to cut it in pieces. And this is uh, you can buy if you and so feta will add more of the will add more of the protein right to it and it's you know if you are if you are sort of worry about the worry about the sodium so be careful um feta is what could be quite salty for sure. All right, so we have feta. Again, if you prefer mozzarella, a little bowls, they are wonderful to add it. It's a good, when you think about it, it's a really good pasta or good dish even to make, not maybe when you go out, but even make for yourself. You can make it in, could be eaten in a few days, in a few days, right? Not, not a big deal because it will, uh, it's a, uh, um, it holds well. It doesn't have, and actually the flavors tomorrow would be probably even better. All right, I like more to All right, so we have pepper. And now we're going to make the dress. And my God, this is a whole bucket of that. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it for a week or more. And give it away to my to my uh, neighbors. All right. So now we're going to make a dressing, and the dressing is fairly simple. So you have an acid, and the acid is lemon or um, lemon juice. And I put a, I'm going to use the red wine vinegar. So I put uh, I squeeze one lemon juice, and then I'm going to use uh, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Oh my dog came hurry, Paul. He always makes appearance on the floor. You cannot see. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Springer Spaniel. Oh, oh, nice. Did you call him Rico? Rico. Yeah. Oh. I was uh so lemon juice, red wine, vinegar, garlic, right? Who does not like gar yeah. garlic? Garlic. You know, the kissing time for me, it's over. <laughs> it's a lot of garlic. If you worry about it, you know, decrease the amount. Okay, so we have um, red wine vinegar, 
uh, we have um, we have oh, and I'm going to add a uh, uh, Dijon mustard and mustard helps with emulsifying stuff. So when we make dressing stuff, let's see, let's see. Oh my, my glasses are that. I wish you could come and enjoy. <laughs> Sorry, so those are ready. Uh, actually, I would like to put them. I will cook them for another minute. Just don't let me forget about it because I will burn them. <laughs> I will a little bit more brown, brown. All right, so we're making the dressing. We have acid, we add some uh, some mustard. Again, it helps with emulsifying, with mixing in well. And oregano, uh, dry oregano and garlic and salt and pepper. So the salt and pepper, obviously you add to your taste. Then where's my olive oil? Here it is. So olive oil, uh, two tablespoons. Uh, Let me try it. Yeah, I love the orange <laughs> earlier. And the lemon is tangy, right? So this is will be absorbed. Another sort of add-on to it is arugula. Why not, right? Why not add some green? So you have arugula. Sometimes even spinach, you can add to it. It's great. Um, so I'm going to add the arugula. I love that. And it's three words, so less work for us, right? All done. A lot of garlic, guys. Definitely no kissing tonight. All right. So you can easily make that salad for yourself. You can add a even chopped chicken for extra protein. I mean, look at this. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful, colorful, summery. Uh, you can really make it. Someone is shot oh someone went to a supermarket to get that coconut chicken oh wonderful <laughs> uh plan your dishes and prepare your ingredients in advance yes fantastic okay so we have you want to try that needs a little more pepper salt but Summer and put in a nice bowl, right? And make it presentable. All right, so this is off. So we are, look, uh, what time is it? 6.40, perfect, we are on time. We are running late, I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? I need to try this if it's any good. Really good. Mm. Really good. That's good. So for dipping, the way how my, my mother-in-law uh made she made it. I remember she was from Ohio. We went to a pool party. And um, she made the dish and brought it to to the host, and um, it's it was served with a uh, mustard. So it's a sort of mm -hmm. a you can serve with that 
sweet chili sauce for dipping that Asian sort of Thai, if you want to. Um, so I'm going to place that and then I'm gonna serve to my guest tonight. See, killing two birds with one stone. There you go. Art, huh? All right. Now, absolutely my favorite. If you don't make any of the dishes that I sort of showing you, you have to make the carrot salad. The only issue with the carrot salad I have is, and, and I'm making double the recipe because I love it so much and I want to eat it for, serve my guests and eat, have it left over for next couple of days. It's amazing on, you put little rice, little chicken or whatever you have meat and, and the salad and it holds well, so great. Uh, the only issue is, is the shredding. You can buy shredded carrots or you can get that shredder and go mm -mm, mm -mm, for a while option, right? That's not a, not a thing. To four cups, you need to have like a four to six carrots, depends on the size, like a larger carrots. Or I use a food processor because I do it, I do it the double the, the portion and I have it like a kitchen and then you go, the attachment go and it's, it shreds. So, this is basically a shredded shredded carrots. I have eight cups here. So I, when first time I was introduced to that uh, to that salad, I went to my friend, a um, uh, Polish friend who lives where in my town, and she made it, and I could not stop eating. It was so good. <laughs> so, it has a nice sort of the tangy, and the tangy comes. So again, it's very simple. The only thing is the shredding part. But if you have a, if you can buy shredded one, sometimes the shredded one, the taste, it's not as right as when you shred your own, right? Because when you shred your own, you have that sweetness, but we have a car, a carrot salad. And then you, the traditional, it comes with garbanzo beans. I am not going to put garbanzo beans today, but you certainly can. Open pan of beans and add it in. That's your protein, that's your fiber, that's your carb right here. Um, I, because I serve other dishes with garbanzo beans, I'm not going to use it. This is more just a, just a plain. So carrots, we have that. And the sweetness is uh, from, um, from dates. So dates, and I check dates, you know, you can buy dates in any market. Seven dates for four cups. The date gives you a lot of sweetness. It's a sort of Moroccan style, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern flavors. Uh, so add this, um, add your uh, dates. Now we say, Joanna, where the heck I'm gonna get the dates? What are we talking about? I cannot get in my local supermarket. Chop some uh, craisins, chop some cranberries, chop some, uh, raisins. It will give you that sweetness. It's a little bit different sweetness. What gives you sweet sweetness? To be honest, I even made without it and it was still delicious because I love that that dressing more than anything. All right. So we have dates mixed in. So just a speckle. So when you eat something and it's tangy and you come across that little more so sweetness, you're like, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> this is, be careful with dates. Dates are very concentrated sugar. So listen to that. Four to five de dates, four to six dates, uh, 120 calories. So it's just like dry fruits, right? They, are, they have a lot of sugar. And 32 grams of uh, carbohydrates minus four grams of fiber. So you're getting 28 grams of uh, carbohydrates in five, five, six of them. You know, it's again, it's like, don't make it a focal point of that, but just adding as a con, uh, as this ingredient is perfectly fine. So dates, and then, we are going to make the dressing. So we have the dates and I also got some green onions. 
cut green onions with that part. Boom, done. What really, I chopped some cilantro. Unfortunately, my cilantro in my garden started blooming. It's mm -hmm. going to seed, it makes babies. It makes coriander my cilantro right now. You know that the seeds of a cilantro, when they turn to seeds, they call coriander. Mm -hmm. But cilantro is the green part. So my cilantro is making baby, cor baby coriander right now. So I was just able to harvest some, but um, I didn't go to a store and buy it. But uh, it, this is like a half a cup. It's very, very flavorful. Uh, so I love, if you are not the cilantro lover, if you have that sort of aversion towards cilantro, skip that. It's perfectly fine. Nobody will be offended. However, you can put a mint. And I have a whole bunch of mint. You know, mint is in, in basic. So mint, my whole can think. So we need to have a little mint. And since I have a little parsley left over, why not? So a little parsley. And so we have, again, already is such a vibrant colors from the, from the herbs. You have the, uh, you have the mint, you have the cilantro, I put a little parsley, green onion. Again, do whatever combination you like. There's no wrong. And now we're going to make dressing. And the dressing is lemon. You, you, you get yourself, and I hope everybody who likes to cook purchase a uh, microplane like this. It's uh, the best tool ever. And whoever took my class knows about it. This, this is, I, wherever I travel, I take this with me because <laughs> you can grate the ginger, you can grate the garlic for your sauces. You can grate the lem lemon or lime, you can grate Parmesan with it. And if you're done, you can take care of your heels if there are <laughs> sauces. Although use maybe another tool for that. But <laughs> you can do that as well. Uh, so this is a really good, good tool. So I already scrape uh, and get, get my, and this is what gives you so much flavor, so much aroma. I'm telling you, this is fabulous. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now I need to cut my, where's my knife? All right, I'll use this one. And my old school. Also, uh, juicer. So this is, I'm making double the recipe. I'm going for two lines. So this is one line. It's going to be a lot, but we want the flavors. And if you don't like the tangy one, you can decrease it. So gently. Oh my God, this was a very juicy, juicy um, line. And the, the spices that goes to it are, again, cumin, right? Uh, grated nutmeg. You can, not, it's not a common, Herb, right? Nutmeg, like you would not use much. You maybe use for make a souffle or bachamel or something. But if you have a little nutmeg, it gives an interesting undertone. So nutmeg, cumin, um, I like spicy, so flakes, pepper flakes, uh, salt and pepper. The original recipes call for turmeric. And turmeric, it's a ginger. It's a cousin of ginger. And as you've heard, probably it's anti-inflammatory. So this is a really good herb to use. And especially in combination with a black pepper, the absorption is increased. So you don't have it in your recipes. I took it out because some people say, hmm, I am going to add, add a little bit. So it's a sort of, again, you can completely skip it, but 
Um, all right, so we have this. Perfect. You know what? Like one, two, three. I might do another one. I just don't want my, my salad to be underdressed and the lime juice is perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, so I have, now let's just clean that up. Right, and we add, I'm going to add four tablespoons, but just because, I'm doubling, so two tablespoons of oil. Again, don't, I wouldn't say be careful with oils, generally for dressings, because it can add a lot of colors. One tablespoon of olive oil or any oil, even good, it's, um, it's 120 colors. So it's, you can quickly overdo it, but adding a little bit with satiety, the food will make you uh, feel full longer, and it helps also with um, with absorption of certain nutrients. There's a lot of vitamins that are soluble in fat. So olive oil, if you have a squishy good one, have much more um, other phytochemicals that are being proved to, uh, to be very tasty. So I'm adding my here, and you have here um, in the list, cumin, nutmeg, red pepper, a flake, sea, sea salt, and uh, and 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 uh, and 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 and, and <laughs> black pepper, and I add a little bit of the turmeric, just because I like it. And this is it. And if you would follow the recipe, the recipe is join the baker. You have on the uh, on the traditional. She adds goat cheese and pistachio. So. Mm -hmm. If you want to take a few notches up, 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 go for it. Um, again, it's a, I, I've done without it and it's perfectly tasty. Very, very good. Local source. And it's so funny, my sister-in-law recently came to visit and he's 84 or six. He has not cooked in his entire life ever. Like he, his his wife who recently passed away, and um, so he was. I made the salad and and offered him with something, and he's like, "This is so good. I need the recipe. I think I'm gonna make it." <laughs> Which was, was adorable. I'm like, hey, I don't know if you cannot distinguish nutmeg from uh from uh <laughs> other stuff. It might be a little little challenging so um let's keep that if you enjoy the salad when I, I will make it for you versus uh make it for yourself but uh it's it's again it's not that complicated when you think about it right you have the carrots you chop that's that sweet either raisins or um dates and then you add the dressing but um again the beauty of that it holds well it can, it's, it doesn't wilt, right? It's not the salad that's going to be, or oh, I have to eat it tonight, otherwise I have to throw it away. But this is, will eat for a couple of days in the refrigerator and it's absolutely delicious. I will take some pictures and post it on Facebook when I play it on my, for my guests. Mm -hmm. uh, in meantime, I will just show you. I mean, it's not. Mm. It's just a carrot with other stuff. Uh, perfect. So we are done with that. Any any questions so far? No. No. Anybody is. Would you please show the the, the chicken? The uh, what what what? Yes, the chicken. I want to see how it looks. I'm I'm preparing it right now. Like a little cookies. 
So you can bake it, make it a little bit more toasty, depends how, but generally depends on your, right? Simple and delicious. Mm -hmm. Joanna, can you tell me where I can get the link to print the handout for this class? Yes, it's the it's you should receive an email if you are a new um new per, uh, new addition to form help a family uh, and you have not seen your diet. No, you have to see your dietitians, otherwise you will not get the link. So when they send a week a, a weekly the schedule on on the classes this should be a link to it if not yeah i have that in the email the, the schedule but there's no attachment to it no okay no attachment okay no no worries i will post it uh i will post it in a facebook as an attachment you click it on the file and you see even previous recipes but i will put, post those recipes Okay. And make sure that uh, whoever is the next email has been sent, it will be attached to it again. So oh. be on their lookout. Thank you. Perfect. Um, any other questions? I think I'm going to turn on the recording. Um,